In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Laudetur Jesus Christus, semper laudetur. The Gospel of today is entitled, The Miraculous Catch of Fish. And it is punctuated by three scenes corresponding to three memorable phrases. The first, go into the deep water. The second, depart from me because I'm a sinful man. And the third, from now on, you will be a fisher of men. So let us start with the first scene. Go into deep water. In Latin is duc in altum. Please memorize it. It means a lot of things for us theologians. Duc in altum. So it was early morning on the shores of the Lake of Galilee. Jesus was already being pressed by tens of thousands of people coming from all over uh, Galilee. They wanted to hear the word of God. So he could not preach. So he was right on the shore about to step on the, on the water. Nearby, there were two large boats and the fishermen were mending their nets. One was the boat of Simon and his brother Andrew with the servants. Another one was the boat of John and his brother James and others servant. So Jesus asked for a favor to Simon, who was the captain of the team, uh, to borrow the boat so that he could stay a few meters offshore and to be able to preach. And somehow Simon agreed. Now, after preaching for the whole morning at about noontime, Jesus dismissed the crowd and then he said to Simon Peter, Simon, Duke in Altum, let's go into the deep for a catch of fish. Well, that morning, Simon was not in a good mood. And then he was a very temperamental person, lack of patience. But that morning was really in bad mood because, first of all, he worked the whole night in the lake and he caught nothing. Second, he had to postpone the washing of the nets and his much-deserved rest because this itinerant preacher coming, they say, from Nazareth wants to borrow my boat. And third, he is the son of a carpenter. He knows nothing about fishing and he's telling me how to do my own job. So the answer of Peter is sort of ironic. As St. Peter says, St. Peter said, Master, we have been working hard the whole night and we caught nothing. But if you say so on your words, we will lower the nets. Of course, in his mind, maybe he thought, you will see now, you will get nothing. And in front of your disciple, <clears throat> it will not be a nice figure. So what happened was this. They moved into the, mid into the midst of the lake. They lowered their nets. By the way, we know historically there were nets uh, 8 meters high and 200 meters long. So they make a circle around the lake. And they, when they recovered the nets, they got so many fish that the nets were at the breaking point. It was really a miracle. The miracle of the <clears throat> miraculous catch of fish. So St. Peter called his, um, the other boat, the one of John and James with the servant. And when they came, they filled the boats with fish and they were almost sinking. So that is the miraculous catch of fish. Now, what kind of fish was that? Well, I'll tell you what kind of fish was that. In the year 2000, I went to the Holy Land and we reached the town of Capernaum where this miraculous miracle happened. And you should know that in our seminary here in Multinational, um, we always eat tilapia. Breakfast, preton tilapia. Lunch, boiled tilapia. Dinner, inihau na tilapia. From Monday to Saturday, tilapia. And on Sunday, <coughs> baked tilapia. So, if you look at my face, looking mukan tilapia, the eyes like this, and the, 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 I look like a tilapia by now. 30 years, 33 years, tilapia, non tilapia, non tilapia. Siempre, yampi nakamura. So, pag that in Saudi land, in Capernaum, I wanted to change. I saw the menu. In Capernaum, everything is St. Peter. St. Peter Avenue, St. Peter's Plaza, St. Peter Port, and St. Peter's Restaurant. So I entered with my mom, uh, mother, the St. Peter's Restaurant. I took the menu. It was written there, St. Peter's Fish. So I asked the waiter, uh, two St. Peter's Fish, one for me 
and one for my dear mother. I was expecting something like El Apu Lapu and Maya Maya, something big. Five minutes later, the waiter came back, the tray, and what was inside the tray? A tilapia! I said, ah, nandito ka pala. I thought I left you in the Philippines. He was persecuting me all the way to the Holy Land. So the fish that they caught is a tilapia. Anyway, once you remove the thorns, the, the meat tastes really good. So this is the first sin. Second sin, <clears throat> depart from me, Jesus, because I'm a sinful man. So having witnessed firsthand the miracle of the fish, Simon fell on his knees. He, he struck his chest and he said, Lord, have mercy on me because I am a sinful man. Well, <clears throat> this is good. Anytime people come closer to God, they recognize their uh, sinfulness. Uh, in the Bible, all throughout the Bible, <clears throat> when God appeared to Abraham at the hawk of Mamre, of course, Abraham fell on his knees, depart from me, I'm a sinful person. And when Moses <clears throat> heard the voice of God at the burning bush, he fell down, I am a sinner. And when God called <clears throat> Isaiah, Isaiah said, how can I? I mean, my lips are impure and I'm surrounded by impure people. All the apostles, all the saints, the closer we go to God, the more we realize that we are a sinner. So it's normal that Simon Peter was, by the way, a sinner. And he recognized it. So recognizing our sinfulness is the first step of holiness. That's why in the Mass, when we start the Mass, <clears throat> that is immediately the confiteor, where for three times we say, <clears throat> through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And then we pray to our Father, forgive us our sins. And during the, hour, the Rosary, for 50 times a day, pray for us sinners. So it is good to recognize that we are sinners. <clears throat> Those who not recognize to be sinners are either liars <clears throat> or cheating. One time, I had a confession for a couple the day before their wedding. So now una and baba, and the woman sincerely said, several times we have premarital sex. Okay, may the Lord forgive you, I gave the absolution. Then the man came, the, came, the man said, and my last confession was the first Holy uh, Communion. Ah, uh, what mortal sins have you committed? Father, I did not commit any mortal sin since my first Holy Communion. So I wanted to tell him, either you are a liar or your fiancé is having sex with somebody else. Because she just told me about this. But I could not because of the sin of because of the seal of confession. We cannot reveal what we have heard in confession. So I, I said, okay, for your penance, you read the book, The Adventures of Pinocchio. Pinocchio, the one with the long nose, and the time he said the line. So that I hope he got the message. Then there are those who say, I am a sinner with the lips, but deep inside they don't believe it. They think to be holy. One time I was invited for an ordination and in the morning, here is the bishop, here is the newly ordained, and on the left, it was me, as the unworthy local superior. So, the bishop, during the Eucharistic prayer, he said, let us pray, at the time it was Benedict, for Benedict, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Because if it is a bishop celebrating the Mass, he doesn't mention his name out of humility. He must say, me, your unworthy servant. So he said, let us pray for Benedict our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. In the afternoon, the first Mass of the priest, so the New Ordain was in the middle, the bishop was on the right, I was still there on the left. And the New Ordain said, let us pray for Benedict our Pope. Then he looked at the bishop, for our unworthy bishop and all the clergy. He got mad. So after the Mass, he scolded the priest. How dare you to say him and I'm worth to serve in front of the people? I said, Bishop, uh, this morning you said those words and the priest is just repeating what you have said. So, yeah, it's a way of saying I was joking. Hey, my, fa my father would say, by joking, we say oftentimes the truth. It's not enough to recognize that we are sinners. We must also repent and go to confession.
Because if I say, oh, I'm a sinner, then I go back to the beer house. Well, that's not the way it works. So we must go to confession. Confession purifies our souls and restores the grace of God and makes us ready to follow Jesus. We Catholic, we should go to confession at least once a year. And much better if it is once a month. You do not know where to go to confession. Come here in the seminary. Uh, in, you Google or ways. Sons of Remary Immaculate Seminary, 30, Mother Isabella de Rosy Street, Multinational Village, Paranaque City, and we are available. There is me, Father JM, Father Michael, but Father People. It's easy to see Mama Mary than Father People. So, we are available. Please come and have your confession. Um, when I was in Rome, we had the priest of the SHMI. He was already old. Every day, hundreds of people from all over Rome will go there for confession. So, the newcomer were asking me, why so many people are coming here for confession? What is so special about Father Socrates Scipione, was the name? Is he older than other priests? <clears throat> is he better? Is he wiser? I said, no. They come here for one reason. What's that? He's blind. <laughs> He's blind. So, you know, the priest is blind, you feel somehow more comfortable. And even here in the seminary, our favorite priest, the, the favorite confessor for the seminary, brothers and priests, is Father Romolo Bertoni of the Stigmatins. Everybody likes to confess to him. He comes every month in our seminary. Why so? You know why? Because he's deaf. So the second part. Depart from me because I'm a sinful man. Anytime we recognize our sins and we go to confession, then we are in the grace of God. Let me finish now with the third memorable, life-changing sentence of Jesus. From now on, you'll be a fisher of men. So Jesus, help Peter have. Look in the eyes, knowing that he will be one day the first Pope. And he said, Simon, from now on, you will be a fisher of men. So no longer fish in tilapia in the Lake of Galilee, but you will become an apostle. And one day you'll become the first Pope and you will be bringing millions of people, millions of fish, millions of people into my church. By the way, anytime a cardinal is elected Pope, they give him the so-called the ring of the fisherman, the fisherman's ring. What is that? It's a golden ring that the Pope wears on the left hand in the ring finger, and it represents St. Peter, either fishing or with two keys, and the name of the newly elected Pope. And the Pope is using the fisherman's ring to seal documents. So anytime he makes a document in secret or whatever, with the, they put wax, red wax, and then with the fisherman's ring, he seals it. In the moment the Pope dies, they re, the Camerlengo, the Cardinal Camerlengo, removes the fisherman's ring and breaks it so that to avoid forgeries and fake documents. So whenever you see somebody with a fisherman's ring, he is the true, authentic uh, Pope. So to finish, what do we learn from the Gospel of today? Not only for the for priests, bishops, popes, but also for everybody, every Catholic. The three basic, basic lessons. The first lesson is really this. Without Jesus, we can do nothing, but with Jesus, miracles happen. Like what happened, the miraculous catch of fish. When Simon was fishing by himself without Jesus, he caught Nothing, but with Jesus, so many fish, he could not be, he could not count them anymore. The second is we need to acknowledge our sins, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea culpa, go to confession in order to be able to follow our Lord in whatever calling we have, priest, sister, married life, single blessing, whatever. And the third and last, not only Simon Peter and the priests and the apostles are called to be fishers of men, but each one of us. Each, each Catholic must be a missionary, must bring Jesus and bring as many fish, as many people back to the Catholic Church. They say that every priest, if he's a good priest, he brings to heaven 5,000 souls. And even lay people, if they do their mission, they can bring to heaven hundreds of people. So that is the beautiful gospel of today. Duc in altum. From now on, you will be a fisher of men. May the Lord bless you and your family, the Father, the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Laudetur Jesus Christus, semper laudetur.